Hey, hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here. How's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great. Been up to nonsense. This was the result of procrastinating. Sitting outside in the growth space, enjoying the warmth and the humidity, hanging out with the plants, enjoying all the lushness and the fresh air. Fresh air. Plant air. You know what I mean. It's all the warmth and everything going on in here. I've been going through my list and trying to get some things done. Sometimes things I normally would wait until summer to do, like repotting some plants. The top of my list was to tend to my philodendron gloriosum, get it repotted, really just to tend to it. I had to wait, so I ordered a new pot for it. Let's have a look at, at the gloriosum. Yep, take it all in. Spitting image of a beautiful, healthy plant. I figured this would be a good thing to do a video on because we learn from each other's mistakes. And also I need to talk through what maybe the mistake was. I'm not entirely positive what happened here, but I have a few ideas. This philodendron was growing pretty well, actually. It was doing wonderfully when I had it outside and when I had it inside last winter and I moved it indoors and over the course of probably I'd say two or three weeks the leaves started to yellow and fall off and they all started to yellow right about the same time. So I thought what had happened here was cold damage. The reason I thought that was because there was an incident back in early November where that garage door got left open. This is before the new heater and all that stuff was in here and it got pretty cold in here. And then this, like within about 48 hours, started to yellow. But this was also just a few days after I moved them inside. So I've just kind of had this sitting around in a spot where it was receiving some light. I've still been watering it, but I honestly just thought it was dead. I was giving it some time trying to pay close attention to the growth here to see if it was going to get squishy and it hadn't. That's why it's still here and I hadn't thrown it away. Well, I thought that this was cold damage because you know, it's a coincidence and timing. I was thinking about it and uh, usually with cold damage on plants, they'll yellow up, especially with an aeroid. They'll turn nice and yellow and uh, then usually turn brown and get mushy and gross. I'm talking about the leaves, not just like the actual runner on the plant, the leaves, they'll get yellow and mushy. These never really got mushy, they just turned yellow and fell right off the plant. That had me thinking that, well, this, maybe this wasn't a result from colds. This actually, very likely, is probably the same thing that happens with my Monstera, my Adansoni, every time I move it inside. It has like a whole bunch of leaves that turn yellow and fall off. Greenhouse shock, well, reverse greenhouse shock, moving the plants from outside to inside. Usually greenhouse shock is when you take them from inside to out. You get it. But I think that that may have been the culprit there. The cold may have had absolutely nothing to do with what happened, which is good because it's not about rot as much. I'm still gonna be paying attention to that as I unpot this and try and give this another shot at life. There was a third option, or really, I mean, really all three things I think are what played a part in what happened here. But the third thing was that I think that the grow lights out here may have actually been too strong, which I wouldn't have expected. I had this philodendron sitting on this plant shelf back here, right behind the metanella. There's this beautiful pink flowers draping off of it, which is directly below some grow lights, but it's like five, maybe five and a half feet below those grow lights. That kind of distance is usually enough where you can put a shade loving plant under them without a problem. But if I sit back and look at the situation here, the begonias are flowering, this metanella keeps flowering, croton has flowers on it right over there, and those are about four feet underneath their grow lights, which would tell me that the, the lights are pretty strong. I already knew they were pretty strong, I just, oh, I didn't think that it would be a problem, but I'm thinking that maybe it was. It's where I had this outside, it was getting a pretty good amount of shade. Too much shade. I talked about that over the summer where there were moments where I was like, I should probably move this, but I was afraid to because it might scorch, and then lose all of its foliage. Yep. So here we are. Welcome to learn from my mistakes. Sometimes I think it's just useful to talk about the various things that go wrong with our plants. Maybe other people can relate. It can be a learning experience. I've been under the impression over the last several weeks that this was just in the process of dying. I was still tending to it, but I was doing that with just like a glimmer of hope thinking that this was cold damage. I hadn't really connected the dots with the light and everything, and it hadn't occurred to me that the leaves never really got mushy, which is a pretty big indicator that it probably wasn't cold damage. And like I said, I think there was shock. Shock from being moved inside, intense lighting, and then that cold too. I mean, those things all probably played a role together. Whatever the case, I'm not that concerned about the plant dying anymore. There is actually some growth starting to come out. It's going to be hard to see on camera, probably. I know it looks like a reddish brown spot. There's some green in there. Got a lovely green nub 
coming up from down there, another one over on this side, but it's still nice and firm. Still lots of firmness inside of that eye and then down under here, have a new growth point. Okay, so admittedly, doesn't look great, but still has lots of potential. Figure the first thing to do is to get the plant repotted, right? Need to come in here, have a look at the roots, clean it up. Like I said, everything's still nice and firm above the soil. Down below might be a different story. I wanna get all this old stuff peeled off and I want to uh, have a look at the tip. Yep, look at that. So that's good. That's a great sign. So the plant's still alive. It's showing signs of wanting to be a healthy plant. Just, it, uh, it didn't get the conditions from me to do so. And I really shouldn't have ripped this piece off. I should have just very gently peeled it open and closed it back up. I just I got a little carried away there. It'll be okay. You can see I needed to repot this anyways. It was coming out of the pot. Something I've needed to do for a long time. I just hadn't gotten around to it. Kept trying to find the perfect pot for it in the process. Almost lost the plant that I wanted that perfect pot for. The roots look okay. There's some brown, some browning, but they're not mushy. There's no odor. This should be just fine. I am going to try and very gently get the old soil out, but I really don't want to disrupt those roots any more than I have to. I also don't want to leave too much of the bark that's in there because that media just was not working for me and how I grow my plants. So disappointing to have something like this happen with a gloriosum. I mean, any plant, but with a gloriosum, I always kind of consider them one of the easier ones to grow. Uh, any issues I ever had with this one were largely my fault and or slash the potting mixture that it was in. I was never crazy about this mix. It's like almost pure bark, which isn't totally unusual. But in the past, when I've had Gloriosums, I had better luck having a, oh, like almost 50%, if not more amount of soil in the mix. And that's probably largely just a climate situation. And uh, I have to balance things between how the plants are going to perform outdoors and indoors. So the soil blend that I use has to accommodate both those situations indoors, typically being more dry. Uh, not this year. Things are nice and humid in the growth space this year. So I don't really have to worry about that as much. There we go. That's good enough. Went through, cut out some dead roots. There's still some in there. You can tell when they're like dry and papery, but when they're still flexible, they don't just snap. I don't usually cut them away. I don't want to do anything to this plant right now that doesn't absolutely need to be done. The only thing that really needs to be done is this needs to go into a pot with some fresh mix. I have here a basket that goes inside of a self-watering container. I don't think I'm going to use the self-watering function on the container. I mostly just prefer this sort of container because it's, well, it's nice and shallow. <laughs> Having the container nice and shallow helps reduce the risk of Right. I consider this more of a rescue potting. Once there starts to be movement from the plant, get some leaves on it, then this will need to be cut and divided. Because you see why? It's right there. That's the problem. <laughs> the container is a smidge too small, but like I said, this is a very temporary situation. This is just getting it into some fresh mix. I don't want it to have so much soil around it that I'm going to have to worry about rot. The problem right here this is where it was hanging over the pot before. I, well, I can't stick that down to the soil. It would technically fit, just barely. But you don't want the end of that runner down into the soil. And I don't think that this plant has the kind of health to it to be cutting it up. I would rather not. That is an option. I could go through, make a cut, you know, probably one right here, and then another probably right around here and set them out that way. But I would really prefer to try and get some rootage going on this part right here first. So uh, I'm going to mound up some soil with some moss on it right underneath there and hopefully it will take root into that when it does i can cut it and then i'll have a piece that's already rooted and ready to move into its own container or i'll probably end up moving it into a container with that plant and just have a group of them going so here's my mix pretty standard aeroid stuff here this is a peat cocoa perlite blend that also has some uh, coconut core and chunk in it also has some yucca extract or root in it and uh it's supposed to be like inoculated with mycorrhiza and rooting things. And here is a mix of orchid bark, chunky perlite, charcoal. There's some more coconut core in there and coconut, corknut, coconut chunk. While that ratio might seem kind of off, because a lot of times you'll, people go 50-50 with these, the bark that I have is pretty big. And when it's that big, you're gonna end up with some pretty nice size air pockets. And I don't want the air pockets to be so big that I'm watering this plant constantly. All right, let's see, I pick that up not holding it. It's also not moistened. A nice airy mix. I've used this for my philodendrons and monsteras before. I always seem to like it a lot, so I don't anticipate there being any problems there. We are talking about an epiphyte here, right? So there's not going to be much going on as far as nutrient uptake goes from the roots. 
Soil still needs to have something to it, though, because they need to have the mechanisms in place for the plant to put down its roots, whether they're feeder roots or anchoring roots. That still needs to be a part of the mix, so I like there to be some richness. Soil also usually add earthworm castings, just didn't have any. All right, that's all potted up. I didn't film the whole process of putting soil in the pot because it's, it's just dumping soil into a container. I did mound up some mix over here by this wonky bit just to help make sure there's something moist there in contact with this runner so that it can go ahead and put some roots out hopefully sometime soon. I gave this a good watering, took it to the kitchen sink, let the water flush through a couple of times. So yeah, this piece right here, that's, that's a problem. You don't really want that pushing into the side of the pot. I figure what I'm going to do here, since I don't want to cut it right now, I don't like making cuts on a plant that isn't in active growth, although I, it is showing signs that it's moving into active growth, which is great. It's not healthy. I don't want to make cuts on a plant that doesn't seem healthy. The risk of rotten infections and all those things just skyrockets. Not that I have statistics on it. Just speaking from experience, generally, you know, you want your plants to be well hydrated and then good condition when you're making cuts on them unless it's to save them which is kind of where I am so I figured the best of both worlds here what I'm going to do is give this probably about I don't know maybe a month something like that and then I will go in and at the very least cut this piece off and then get this more leveled out with the soil get some active growth meaning leaves to come out of the top and come summertime this will get moved into a longer rectangular pots that that runner can just keep moving. It's the round pots with the philodendrons are fine when they're smaller, but generally as they get bigger, it's just easier to have them something that they can move through instead of hit the edge and either move around or start to put up smaller growth. That growth right there is just barely touching the pot. I tried to mount it up a little bit higher so that it wouldn't be in contact there, but I just couldn't quite swing it and then still have the rest of the growth properly uh, submerged at the right level. Yeah, not ideal. By no means a how to repot your philodendron video. Not one bit, just like I said, for I'd bring y'all along for the ride and that way if there can be progress updates in the future, then have something to reference back to. I think I mentioned that I don't plan on actually using the self-watering function on this container, at least not until what's left in there after I've removed this piece. Once that has a good amount of growth on it, then maybe. But when I'm trying to get something going, I like to have more control over the moisture. It's so easy to have too much water inside of these pots. I know that they have the little bobby doodad in the back. Uh, those aren't always the most reliable, especially if it's a really cheap pot like this one. This was like, I think, 10 bucks off of Amazon. I mostly just wanted to use this container for the depth, and I like that it had the legs on it so that should it end up dripping and a lot of moisture going down below it, then that'll help provide more humidity from the bottom, but not necessarily saturate the top. And having this in this more of a shallow container, where the soil's only like this much in there, something like that, that's going to help prevent there being too much moisture in the soil. Want it to be consistently moist, can dry just a smidge between waterings. What I don't want, and what I don't ever want with any of my philodendrons is, or any plants really is to have a big pocket of soil where there aren't many roots in it and it's just sopping wet. That's start to have issues with rot there. So this is a fairly even distribution of the roots. There's like a patch right around here where there aren't a ton, which is another reason why I don't want to use the self-watering function, right? Because if the roots aren't all over the place and they aren't moving actively, they're not taking up the water, then it's just rot because the plant isn't actively growing. If it's a healthier plant or one that you're trying to get rooted, that would be fine. This plant is kind of like in an odd in-between space. So I'm just kind of trying to combine the best of multiple strategies here and hope for the best. Ideally, I would pack some moss right into this spot to help hold the moisture into that soil. I just don't have any right now. I would use the long fiber sphagnum moss, really any moss that I had around. There's about 10 inches of snow on the ground right now, so I'm not running to the store. This will be fine like this for a couple of days. So you need to make sure that that stays nice and moist. And uh, I would probably pack that moss from like right around here and over it and just leave barely the top of that exposed, if even. But keeping this out here in the growth space, it's about 77 to 82 in here. Varies a little bit. I think that's 25 to like 29, 28 Celsius, somewhere in there. Humidity varies between about 55% and up to like 95. I've been trying to keep it around 70. It's just been a little bit difficult. Still learning the new heating system, I'm trying to get things balanced out there. And it will be a few feet lower from the grow lights than it was before. 
So hopefully that will make a big difference there, and I'll keep everybody updated. It's possible I might cut into this thing and find out it has Flusarium, something like that. I mean, who really knows? What will ideally happen is start to get some movement out of this plant, and I'll have more confidence in making this cut right here, and I'll make that cut and then get this piece balanced back out, and then uh, probably midsummer can do a full-on repot with it into a more ideal situation, as opposed to having it in this just kind of rescue repot situation here. I really am anxious to get this piece cut out and move, though. I don't... It's really bugging me. I don't like that. I don't like that this part isn't leveled down there how it should be into the soil, and I don't like that the end is touching the pot, and there's just all kinds of things that aren't right here. However, all that being said, I'm really just happy that it's alive, because I thought this plant was dead. Like I said, I held on to it just like with a glimmer of hope, thinking that maybe it wasn't. And uh, when I started connecting the dots after thinking about it for a while and realizing that it probably wasn't cold damage, I was more confident to uh, get this fixed up and pot it up properly. Big relief there. I just need to get it to spring back to life. It, the reason I was relieved that it wasn't damaged from the cold and that I was happier with it being damaged from basically just environmental change and shock is that it's usually a lot more difficult to bring a plant back from cold damage. You had to go in and cut it up and remove the rot, but there was never any tenderness in here, so I didn't mess with any of that because it, it probably wasn't cold damage. It's probably just the changing conditions from being outside then in and then having that cold snap that happened in here and then the drastic change in lighting. There's not much left to look at or talk about here. Just hopeful that we'll get to see some progress here in the future and I'll be able to have some happy updates with the plant. If not, not the end of the world. It's a plant. It's going to be fine. Comment down below. Tips, tricks, suggestions. Always appreciated. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.